Sometimes you wish the Buddha had included moods as the sixth aggregate, because it's something we hold on to really tightly. Of course, it's there in the aggregates, comes under fabrications. These are states of mind and body. They get put together. But we're so used to them that we have our own, what you might call, signature moods. Then we can we become very unaware of how we're putting them together. They're just there, it seems. We alter them very tightly because they seem to be us even more than our thoughts. We know that we get a lot of our thoughts from other people, but our moods seem to be totally coming from within, totally ours. But as long as you identify with them, they're going to color everything. You've got to see that they're dangerous, especially when you put yourself in a bad mood. You tend to roll around in your bad moods the same way a dog would roll around in a dead squirrel. And the dog is perfectly happy to do that. And even though you know it's a bad mood, you still roll around in it. Part of the reason is you feel surrounded by it. It's in your body, it's in your mind, it seems to be coloring the air all around you. But it is something you can get out of. And it's good to remember that you can. So think about why you might want to get out of those moods, even though it feels, feels alien to not be in that mood. One thing you can ask yourself is, do you want to be in a bad mood when you die? You think, of course, that would be a great time for a bad mood, because what could be worse? That's precisely when you don't want to be in a bad mood. You want to be confident that you can handle what's going to come out. So do a little mindfulness of death. This is something that's really misunderstood. Some people think it's simply there to remind us someday you're going to die, so you've got to prepare. But a lot of times death is all around us, and we would rather not think about it. The Buddha is saying, look, think about it. This is how you think about it, how you prepare. You're going to need to get your mind in good shape, and that includes your moods. So if any unskillful moods hanging around, you've got to learn how to get rid of them. We think about death in this way because it shows us that we can do something to prepare. The common way of thinking about it is that it's going to come anyhow. There's nothing much you can do about it. You're just going to die and be annihilated. That's it. So what's the skill? But the Buddha is saying there is a skill involved, and you want to be in the right mood to do that. This is where it's useful to remember what the Buddha said. The moods would come under fabrication. What are the kinds of fabrication that go into it? Well, there are the three big ones. It's bodily fabrication, the way you breathe, verbal, the way you talk to yourself, and then mental, the perceptions you hold in mind and the feelings you focus on. Those are the things that went in to create the mood, so you can change them. And there are lots of ways you can change them. Think about those lists of things the Buddha tells Rahula to think about before he does breath meditation. Because one of the times you're really going to need to get the mind in the right mood is just when you sit down to meditate. Some people have trouble. They come from their daily life where there's frustration and they're impatient. They sit down and focus on the breath, and they get frustrated and impatient with the breath. So the first order of business is get the mind in the right mood to be with the breath on good terms. So the Buddha recommended one, try to make your mind like earth. Think of the part of the mind that can just be with anything, no matter what, because it's there. 
When you're in a good mood, it knows. When you're in a bad mood, it knows. That's the part you can make like Earth. And look at the way you talk to yourself around goodwill, empathetic joy, compassion, equanimity. The way you talk to yourself about your body, the way you talk to yourself about things around you outside. Try to get yourself in the right frame of mind to settle down. So those are some of the ways you can talk to yourself. And then you can ask yourself. Part of the mind will resist changing the, the fabrications, saying, well, I'm not true to myself if I'm not true to my moods. But then how have your moods been true to you? Are they always helpful? Always there when you need them? Not at all. They come and they go. They're not responsible in any way, and they're certainly not going to feel neglected if you don't indulge in them. So talk to yourself first in a way that makes you more and more inclined to say, okay, I can get rid of these moods, I can let go of them, and not be a traitor to myself, actually showing that I have some concern for myself. And then look at the images you hold in mind. These will be individual words or phrases, sometimes pictures. They're looking around in there someplace. And if you're not sure what they are, just try a few images that are more of a sunny disposition, confident disposition. You as capable of doing the meditation, you as not being worn down by your daily routine. And see which part of the mind says you're lying. That's where you're going to find where those perceptions are. Because it's that part of the mind that tends to believe we're in a bad mood. That's the real you. And that's where you really see reality for what it is, how miserable it is. And that believes that any happy moods are, are false. And they have to call that part of the mind. Call it out. Based on what? Well, you've had disappointments in the past, and you feel that your way of shielding yourself from disappointments is just be in a bad mood all the time, not expect anything. But then you don't accomplish anything. After all, as long as your experience is going to be fabricated, do it well. Do it in a way that allows you to attain things that you wouldn't have attained otherwise. So when you can see that your moods are fabrications, and they seem to be you simply because they've been around for a long time, they're habits, old habits, then you realize okay, you can change the way you fabricate things. Develop some new habits, and it doesn't matter how old you are. As long as you have a breath that comes in and goes out, you can change the way you fabricate your breath. You can listen to what the Buddha has to say about how we are capable of changing our habits, abandoning unskillful habits and developing skillful ones in their place. Now think about it. You know, the Buddha was not some dreamy Pollyanna type who simply said nice things. He tortured himself to the verge of death, and he came back. He found the middle way. Okay, you can find the middle way, too. He's shown that it's possible. And that the confidence that there, there is a way out, that's what kept him going, even when things look pretty bleak. It can keep you going. That can be the mood you hang on to. 
the confident mood. And you can make it you. This is one of those areas where you, you don't apply not self across the board. You're trying to create the good mood. Identify with it for the time being at least. You're confident, you're capable, competent too. And the more you can take these moods apart and reassemble them in a way that's helpful for the path, the more you're going to believe that, because you can make it true. Remember, there's two kinds of truth, the truths that are truths whether you want them to be or not. And then there are the truths that will be true only if you want them and act on that desire. And they're just as true. It's just that your relationship is different and it takes more out of you. But when the Buddha teaches the truth of a path that can take you to the end of suffering, Even though it takes a lot out of you, it's really worth it, because it pays back many times over. <laughs>